Are you ready to ace your next teacher interview? Because in today's episode, we're going to explore a critically important question that interviewers love to ask. We're tackling the question, how will you differentiate instruction in your classroom? It's not a trick question, but it's a critically important one. Grab your pen, your piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start this journey right now. Hey, everybody. Dr. Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher all the way to the office of school district superintendent to help you go further, faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, welcome in and thanks for being here. And while you're here, don't forget, hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest content or episodes. All right, let's jump right in. Let's not waste any time. The question at hand is, how will you differentiate instruction in your classroom? And this is a question I can guarantee you every principal wants to know that when your door closes and it's just you and your beautiful scholars, that you know how to meet their individual needs, that you know that you're going to have to do different things on different days at different times for different students every single day. And that you have the tools, you have the skills, you have the attributes and you also have the passion, the commitment, the desire to know that you're going to have to do different things for different students because that's what they need. So this is what principals are going to be looking for. And so I want to help you to be able to deliver on that, that question. So when that question comes up and they say to you, Gordon, so tell me a little bit about how you differentiate instruction in your classroom. You'll be able to sit back and you'll be able to think about the natural gifts and talents that you have and how you will deliver those things in a real world scenario with real students who have really unique and different needs. So my goal in this episode is simply to give you again some ideas to think about, some ideas that you could use to create your own response, your own unique individualized response that is you, authentic, authentically you, because that's what you want the principal to hear. Not just a regurgitation of a series of statements, but, but more uniquely, what does it mean for you? How do you draw on your own lived experience? How do you draw on the things that you've learned in your teacher preparation program at your university, in your particular community, in your particular area of the country? Because there are nuanced differences. The way we do it here in California versus the way we do it in South Carolina and the way we do it in Texas or the way we do it up in the far northeast of Maine, it's contextualized is important, right? So I just want to get your juices flowing. I just want to get you to start to think about it. So I'm going to give you two sample template responses like we've done in our previous episodes where we've wor worked our way through these critically high frequency type questions that you're going to get as a part of your teacher interview. So we're going to follow that same roadmap. And so check out our previous videos that are up uh, pinned up in the top that will take you through other high frequency questions that you will hear and that you will see as a part of your interview process. All right. So let's jump right in into template response number one. So the very first response that you could give when given the question, how will you differentiate an instruction in your classroom? What the, would that look, feel and sound like? It could sound something like this. Differentiating instruction means understanding that every student learns differently and adapting my teaching to meet their needs. For example, I might group students by ability for certain activities by providing scaffolded tasks for those who need extra support and extension activities for advanced learners. I also can incorporate multiple learning modalities. I could use things like visuals, hands-on activities, and digital tools to engage students' auditory, visual, and kinesthetic learning modalities. To monitor progress, I'll use formative assessments like exit tickets or quick check-ins to adjust my instruction in real time. My ultimate goal is to create an inclusive learning environment where every student feels supported and challenged to reach their full potential. Now think about all of the different things that you heard in that response. 
the types of instructional changes you'll make, the types of assessment changes you'll make, the types of instructional grouping methodologies that you can use. You can go deeply on any one of those three, but the idea of using scaffolds, the idea of using exit tickets, the idea of using different types of learning modalities, like I wanna make sure I'm hitting auditory, I wanna make sure I'm moving them around and doing things that are kinesthetic because you want to tap in to what are the gifts and talents, not only of yourself, but also of the students in front of you. So take those ideas, just some, those big broad ideas about how to differentiate in a general kind of learning environment and tailor them for your own. Make them look, feel, and sound like you in the way that you would want to best exemplify and per personify them to a principal because that is gonna put your best foot forward and give them a rock solid response. Now with that, let's talk about a sample response, another example response that we could give as well to this critically important question of how will you differenti differentiate instruction for your students? All right, so again, before we jump into that second response, uh, I want you to go to the, con um, I want you to go to the pinned comments below because in the pinned comments below, I have a, a gift, a free gift for you. It's going to give you, again, some, some skills, some strategies, some resources, some frameworks that will help you prepare for your next interview. That's going to give you lots of confidence. It's going to give you different strategies that you'll be able to use and be able to adequately and effectively prepare for that very, very critically important interview process. So go to the pin comments below and download that free gift because it will help you. These are the types of strategies that I'm teaching to people every single day. And I'm coaching people to use these types of frameworks, using these mental maps to be able to prepare for that stressful environment that you're going to be in when you're doing the interview. I know it's stressful. I know it can bring about anxiety. So use these tools because they'll help you as you prepare. All right. So let's move into sample response number two. So in sample response number two, we're gonna, we're gonna give it a little bit more context because we're gonna talk about how to differentiate specifically in a classroom that has high levels of technology. And so th this is the world where we're headed because there's so much technology that's at our fingertips. Our, our scholars are highly adept at using technology, right? So they're ready for it. They wanna embrace it. We also are going to need to embrace it, but we're also going to need to still remember that there are some still structural inequities that exist where certain students have a lot more technology savvy than others. All students, I think, are familiar, but using it in the context of as a learning tool, it's very different and it can be in a very different, different spaces. So you're going to want to be able to also speak to differentiating in a technologically driven classroom as well. And if you want a sample response of how you could start to think about that, it could sound something like this. In my classroom, I use technology to differentiate instruction effectively. For instance, I use platforms like Google Classroom and adaptive learning tools that provide individualized pathways for students based on their proficiency levels. I also design lessons that allow students to choose how they demonstrate their understanding whether it be through a written essay, a multimedia presentation, or a creative art project. Regularly reviewing data from these tools helps me to identify students who need additional support or enrichment. And this approach ensures that all learners, regardless of their starting point, can engage with the material and make meaningful progress. And that's what every principal wants to know is that at the end of the day, will you create an environment? Will you create a space where all students can make meaningful progress from wherever they started on day one to where they are on day 180? What type of progress have you moved them along in that continuum? Have you just steadily made progress with them? Some of them being further along, some of them needing more support. And how do you differentiate in a technologically driven classroom? And how do you use technology as a, a resource and as a support? And how do you use it as a leverage point? You can use technology as a leverage point to create a rich learning environment. 
but creating those opportunities and being able to showcase who you are and how you can bring those things to light are going to be critically important for you to do during the interview process. So keep these things in mind and use these templated response to start crafting what your unique responses will be. Because I want you to get that next job. I want you to sit there confidently and comfortably and answer those questions and know that you are putting your best foot forward and then that principal should be happy and honored to offer you an opportunity to work in their school. And you can showcase that by just following these tips, these, stru these strategies and these structures that we've laid out for you. All right. So continue to check out other pieces that are on the channel. There's a lot of different episodes and lots of different resources. Um, if you've made it to this far, you've made it to this point in the video. Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with a friend, share it with 10 friends. We're continuing to try to push this to as many people, as many educators as possible. We want to continue to grow your skills, your knowledge, but also the skills and knowledge of the education community. 10,000 leaders, 10,000 educators strong. We want to grow too. So I want to thank you. Share with us in the comments below what are one or two ways that you will differentiate in your classroom. Those comments, those ideas, as you put those in to the comments, it helps the community. There are so many people who are reading those comments and they're gaining wisdom. They're getting insights from you. So share that information with us in the comments below because it adds value to the community. All right. And also, if you want more information on coaching or resources or mentorship, um, our week, our weekly newsletter, all those things, sh check the description below in the video. And I want to thank you again for everything that you do, educating our kids, spending time growing and developing the next leaders of our communities. This is a movement and we're moving in a great direction. And so thank you for the commitment and thank you for the work that you do. And until we see you on our next episode, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Be well.